We have, um, I believe we have Dark Falcon, and I don't know who this is. Maniac? So, Falcon? I mean, wow. Sorry. <laughs> so, Belmont and I. Very interesting here. Um, so, definitely been watching a lot of um, I, especially um, seeing, you know, um, if I remember correctly, Bad. Uh, but Whoa. wow. That, that is just such an amazingly clean stock taken. That first game from um, Dark Falcon, very nice. Definitely be interested to see because I mean, if they can keep their advantage, they can make it definitely a very hard time for um, Maniac to just kind of play, you know. Especially considering I think they got um, they got hit by the um, holy water. And that kind of just, you know, stopped um, Ike from uh, being and whatnot. Kind of yeah, just stalling it out there. Yeah, this is really unfortunate. Like, you know, knock off the throw, put a dash attack, and just immediately just try to push Ike towards the ledge. And, uh, yeah, that's what we saw. And right now, um, it looked for, like for a little bit that Maniac was going to, you know, quickly take a stock. But, you know, Dark Falcon with the poise and just playing this range game. And Maniac has not found a way to really break... Dark Falcon zone at this point. Mm -hmm. What I'm definitely hoping to see, because you did see um, that Maniac definitely did catch that holy water, but I definitely like to see if he knows um, how to kind of play with holy water. Just because um, if you didn't know when holy water um, touches a shield, it bounces off. So just seeing what he can do with it um, and definitely going to take that first stock there. But I definitely love to see the type of versatility people can have with that um, um, special. Yeah, and also when you're getting hit by holy water, you can SDI that up, right? So even then, Dark Falcon, when he took that stock, Accounted for the SDI up by doing the forward air, right? Because you thought, why would he just do the down? I mean, up smash, forward, excuse me, forward smash, him, right? So in that situation, a lot of people can you can DI up out of that, um, DI up and away out of that. And I don't know what you can actually do about that holy water. So if I get hit by that holy water like that, can you just like SDI down so you don't get hit by the whip? Like, what would you do there? Yeah. So, um. Very uh, SDI down, but if anything, make sure you play it in um, shield a lot because that's kind of one of um, the Belmont's weaknesses because um, from my experience, definitely staying in shield, um, playing very patiently and trying to catch um, the holy water as much as you can, just because playing with that actually helps a lot, you know, and just taking away one of the Belmont's um, most useful tools. But yeah, definitely SDI down in a way, just to get out of there faster, um, and not really die from it, as you've seen um, Maniac die for. Yeah, because that was, uh, what was that? That was uh, pretty much uh, three for three. Mm -hmm. mm, that, was, that was that was three for three in the Holy Water kills, uh, so I feel like Maniac definitely needs to do something about that. We're going to run it back with Smashville, and I really don't, I don't really disagree with this pick anyway, because, you know, you kind of want to corner Belmont. And a stage like Smashville definitely lets you do that. But the thing is, even in the short range, in the short space, Maniac still can't break the space, man. I feel like he might need to take the aerial, more of an aerial approach than trying to fight Dark Falcon head on. Like maybe you don't, maybe board the platform pool to try to get an aerial approach. Mm -hmm. Definitely using a lot of platforms, I feel like definitely does help a lot of um, characters just kind of maneuver around. Definitely adding that movement factor towards um, Smashville. Um, and movement, like, I'm not sure if oh, that was very sad right there, but movement definitely kind of actually helps a lot in terms of just playing the game. Like, even though I feel like movement doesn't have too much of a part of it, it does actually help being able to maneuver your way around specific, you know, hitboxes and whatnot. Yeah. Just kind of like threaten different types of spaces and kind of give um, routes to new specific combo um, routes and whatnot. Oh my god, that was almost really bad. And um, yeah, and to build off what you were saying, uh, yeah, like, you know, you do need to threaten people with your space sometimes, right? And I feel like, you know, Maniac started to do a little bit of a better job threatening with Nair, threatening with the, the sword space. Right, like Ike does have a big sword and takes up a lot of space, and I feel like you know, all the damage that Maniac just racked up was definitely due to 
them utilizing the range of their sword. That could have spelt a horrible situation there. <laughs> they definitely... Not entirely sure why they did that, but definitely feel like staying on stage mode would have been the best option and trying to make it so that Belmont can be farther away from stage as possible. Um, from what I know, if you do something that kind of stops them from like recovering, their like movements, are, they like kind of just flop <laughs> after um, getting hit once off stage. Yeah, you know, can we can we talk about the coverage? Can we talk about the coverage, covering covering the forward angle with the holy water, throwing the axe, and then throwing out a forward air just to make sure the axe still doesn't recover in between those two options. Like that's pretty good coverage. Very amazing coverage coming in there. I feel like it would also be good if we see on Maniac use. Um, I think it's um eruption. I'm not really sure that's the move I'm um, for it, but definitely like to see that a lot more. Just for covering, you know, when people want to recover back to ledge and whatnot. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and you know, either an eruption or you have to put some type of offstage pressure on Belmont at some point, right? Like, like we, you know, we we know Ike does not have the best offstage game, and he, oh, and you know, almost got reverse reverse edge guarded before. But I feel like you do have to take a chance against Belmont, uh, especially off stage. I definitely like seeing what they're going for, especially with that um that jump in there, but gonna get hit by that axe just sending them right into the blast zone. Yeah, and that was um I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna lie, that was like pretty uh that was a uh, pretty uh quick work, you know. Yeah, pretty yeah, pretty Honestly. Quick work. Just definitely really enjoyed seeing that game coming in from Dark Falcon. Very convincing, just almost completely obliterated them the first game. Um, and just kind of making light work of them third game, I mean second game as well. Yeah, and, you know, and, and it did end up, end up being pretty close in socks. I do feel like Maniac got a little bit comfortable with the matchup in that aspect, right? Got a little bit comfortable with the spaces that they wanted to interact with Belmont in, right? Still wasn't fully there when it comes to the offstage edge guarding, but um, yeah, you know, I, did, I do feel like Mania did get a little bit better at the matchup um, towards the end of the game. But yeah, you know, Dark Falcon just, but most of the time, completely in control in neutral, and um, especially when it comes to offstage, and even when Ike is charging up their uh, their side B and just covering like all these aerial aerial options and with the axe and the holy water it's just it's just a lot of stuff man and you know dark falcon dark falcon did that man <laughs> so good you know go to dark falcon mm -hmm. so, so if i can see correctly we either have um blazing boy and jay grind or we have zane and jonathan g next not Ooh. sure uh what does Blazing Boy play? Blazing Boy plays um Pyra or Mithra. Okay, I was hoping it wasn't Roy. Um. <laughs> okay, that's good. Okay, that right, been very okay. Fun. I know I always talk about this when it comes to Roy, but this is 